Hey, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Nomadic Geek. In the first video of this series, we used the AZ Envy development board equipped with a gas sensor and humidity and temperature sensors to stream its readings and transmit them via WebSockets. In the second video, we set up a Node.js server to stream the sensor values to. In the third video, we constructed the web client page, which displayed the values streamed from the sensors to the Node.js server. In this video, we will use the ESP32 CAM module to stream video via WebSockets to the Node.js server, along with some sensor data of its own. In the upcoming video, we will utilize AI or machine learning to read out objects from the video stream for each frame. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you know when I post more content. Stay tuned and let's get started. First, open the Arduino IDE. You should see the main window with a blank sketch open. Next, we need to add the URL for the ESP32 board to the Arduino IDE. To do this, go to File Preferences in the top menu. This will open the Preferences window. In the Additional Board Manager URLs field, enter the URL for the ESP32 board. Click OK to close the Preferences window. Now we can install the ESP32 board in the Arduino IDE. Go to Tools Board Boards Manager. This will open the Boards Manager window. Type ESP32 in the search field and press Enter. The ESP32 platform should appear in the list of available boards. Click on it and then click the Install button. I have already installed the ESP32 board, so I can skip this step. The installation process may take a few minutes to complete. But once the installation is complete, you can click Close. And then go to Tools Board and select ESP32 Arduino from the list of available boards. For my module, I select the ESP32 Rover Kit. Now that you have added the ESP32 board to the Arduino IDE, you can access a variety of example code for the ESP32. To find the example code, go to File Examples. From the list of available examples, select ESP32. This will open a submenu with a list of example sketches specifically for the ESP32 board. You can use these example sketches as a starting point for your own projects, or simply as a way to familiarize yourself with the capabilities of the ESP32. For now, we will be exploring the camera web server example. This sketch demonstrates how to use the camera module on the ESP32 to set up a simple web server that serves the camera's live video stream. We will first need to choose the correct camera model that we have on the board. The example sketch provides several options for different camera models, each of which is defined by a hashtag defined statement. To choose a particular camera model, you will need to uncomment the corresponding hashtag defined statement by removing the slash characters at the beginning of the line. You can then comment out or remove the other hashtag defined statements rows for the other camera models. Before you can run the camera web server example sketch, you will need to enter your Wi-Fi credentials so that the ESP32 can connect to your local Wi-Fi network. To do this, you will need to replace the placeholders, the stars, with your own Wi-Fi SSID and password like we did for the ESP8266 in an earlier video. Thank you. 
Before we can upload the sketch to the ESP32 CAM board, I want to note that we will be using the same TTL serial adapter that we used to program the ESP8266, but with a slight different configuration. With that being said, let's dive into the wiring process. First, connect the GND pin on the serial adapter to any GND pin on the ESP32. This will establish a common ground between the two devices, ensuring reliable communication. Next, connect the RX pin on the ESP32 to the TX pin on the serial adapter. This will allow the serial adapter to transmit data to the ESP32, which is necessary for programming the module. Moving on, connect the TX pin on the ESP32 to the RX pin on the serial adapter. This will allow the ESP32 to transmit data back to the serial adapter, allowing us to receive feedback and debug any issues that may arise. To power the ESP32, we need to connect the 5V pin on the serial adapter to the 5V pin on the ESP32. This will provide the necessary voltage for the module to function. Finally, Connect a jumper between the IO0 pin and GND pin on the ESP32. This will allow us to put the module into bootloader mode, which is necessary only when programming the board and should be removed after upload is done. With these connections in place, we should be all set to program the ESP32 CAM module using our trusty TTL serial adapter. It's worth noting that proper wiring is crucial for successful communication between the adapter and the module, so be sure to double check your connections before proceeding. This is an example of what it might look like. Now it's time to upload the sketch to the ESP32 CAM. Before we do that, let's quickly check our board settings in the tools menu. Make sure that the correct board is selected and that the correct port is chosen. If you haven't connected the TTL adapter yet, you might see that the port is grayed out like in my case. No worries, I will connect it to the USB port right away. As we can see, the TTL serial adapter is using port COM5. Also make sure the partition scheme is set to huge app. With these final preparations complete, we can now click the upload button and wait for the compilation and upload process to finish. Once it's done, we can test out the demo and see how it performs. Now, to access the camera server, we will need to open the serial monitor by clicking on the magnifying glass icon in the top right corner of the Arduino IDE. Disconnect the TTL serial adapter and remove the bootloader jumper from the GND to IO0 pins. Then, reconnect the TTL adapter and observe the serial monitor. You should see an IP address displayed. Simply copy this address and paste it into your web browser's address bar. Hit enter and you should be able to view the camera web server in the browser. Scroll down and click start stream and scroll up again to see the video feed. Now we are replacing the demo example code to the code used to communicate with the Node.js server. ESP underscore camera dot H. This is the main camera library header file. It provides functions for initializing and configuring the camera module, as well as functions for capturing and processing images. Camera underscore pins dot H. This header file defines the pin numbers for the camera module signals. These pin numbers are used in the configuration of the camera module. Next, the code declares a WebSockets client object called client, which will be used to send data to the WebSocket server. In the setup function, the camera module is initialized and configured using the ESP underscore camera underscore init function and the sensor underscore T structure. 
The camera module is then connected to the Wi-Fi network using the Wi-Fi.begin function. In the loop function, the code checks if it is connected to the WebSocket server. If not, it attempts to connect using the client.connect function. If connected, the code obtains a new frame buffer from the camera module using the ESP underscore camera underscore FB underscore did function. The frame buffer is then sent to the WebSocket server as a binary message using the client.send binary function. For the time being, we are transmitting placeholder data for the sensors. However, in an upcoming video, we will be connecting and configuring actual sensors to the ESP32 and sending authentic sensor data. Stay tuned for that. Now, we just have to change SSID and password to our network and change the IP address to the node.js server, uploading like we did with the demo example code and we are good to go. Now, open the WebSocket server code we wrote in an earlier tutorial video and add a configuration for the new camera module. The new configuration should match the port stated in the code running on the ESP32 cam module. All cameras and sensors we add must have a unique port. Then we just add the image from the ESP32 cam module to the object as that frame and replace with a new one whenever we get a new one from the module. Regardless of whether it is a sensor reading or a streaming image transmitted via WebSockets as part of a sensor configuration, the code broadcasts it to all of its connected clients as previously demonstrated in an earlier video. Opening the web browser and navigate to localhost on port 8000 slash client, we will see the ESP32 camera module transmitting its video stream to the client in real time. And there you have it. And that concludes this episode of the tutorial series. In the next installment, we will delve into image recognition, enabling us to identify objects in the camera's field of view. Thank you for joining in and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.